though your heart is aching, a smile, even though it's breaking. When there are clouds in the sky, you'll get by if you smile to your fear and sorrow. Smile, and maybe tomorrow you'll see the sun come shining through for you. Light up your face with gladness, high and bring dreams of sadness.
I really admire him, Paul. You admire me? You seem to know exactly what you're doing. No self-doubt. I wish you could get that sure of things. You don't know what to do? Not really. Me neither. Okay. How about that? We'll just make each other! We can't do that. The things are secondary. You know that. They want cooperation. They want to turn friend into friend. And if you name anybody, especially each other, we'll only be perpetuating this insanity. When you reach a certain age, you like to think that your life's built on principles. You know what to believe in and what to stand for. You take something like this to smack you in the face, to wake you up to the way the world really is, what it's all about. I'll tell you what, the press is hell. So what are you going to do? Uh, one by one, we're disappearing. We're going to jail. Yeah, but we'll get out. Like the Rosenbergs getting out? Paula, do you mind if I ask you a person? Sure. <coughs> Why'd you join the party? The truth? Because I wanted to get in the writer's field and I thought it might help. <laughs> Between you and me, half the time, I didn't know what was being said at those meetings. And is it worth going to jail? The guys I don't know yet, but when the time comes, I'll stand up and be counted, right? <laughs> Right. Well, I appreciate you stopping by, but it's pretty late. What do you mean? I just got here. Well, I've got a lot of work to do this evening. Well, I didn't switch paths three times just to watch you type. Don't we need to make plans? You're not here because you heard about this thing? No, I'm here because I got your message. My message? I got a message at home to meet you here because you could have sell me in. Paula, we haven't had a sell meeting in two years. Who gave you the message? Ralph. And he said it was from me? No, I just assumed. He said it was a man, and he said to meet here at 10 o'clock. Paula, I didn't call you. That is bizarre. Maybe I should stay. Unless you want me to leave. I do. <clears throat> and I don't. I don't understand, Billy. Well, you might as well stay so we can figure out what the hell is going on here. Hey, baby, we're being set up! Set up? Yeah, the FBI! Maybe they're setting us up! <laughs> you put that in the movie, no one would believe it. Yeah. Who is it? It is me, Ernest. Billy, this is not good for us to be meeting. Were you followed? Followed? Well, did you notice anything funny on your way here? A black sedan, maybe? This is why I am asked here. To have ridiculous questions put to me like a committee chairman. He didn't ask him yet. Then who? Jesus Christ, this is not good for us to meet this guy. all right. It is not all right. Do you know what happened to me this morning? You they borrowed from the lot this morning. When I got home, Pam Sabina was waiting for me. Good. Good? It is better that it is out in the open. Now we can make plans. Let me look at the new script, my friend. Why would they bring together three people they just needed before? Rosie is also here. She is? We rode together. She is downstairs. She does not bear to watch me parking my car in the sideways parking place. She must do it herself. American women. You, me, Paula, Rosa. <gasps> Why are we here? It's not an offense. It's a fence. This is how you talk now you want to write gangster movies for those stinking Warner Brothers. So, Billy, now that we have nothing to fear anymore, we can begin to make our plans. What plans? Billy is now going to speak to Europe to make a picture. Many pictures. Don't do it, Billy. Stay in fight. Be strong. That is not strong. That is stupid. You will both end up in jail. Yeah. Just think of the crowd, the station, to send us up. You are now a lover, my friend. The only crowd around you will be the federal marshals begging to take you into custody. Protect yourself. Take the Fifth Amendment. The Fifth Amendment is for the that The Fifth Amendment is a necessary thing, my friend. It allows us the chance to leave the country and continue to work. Now that we've been subpoenaed, Billy and I will soon be taking the Fifth Amendment. Now, repeat after me. I respectfully refuse to answer the question on the ground that may incriminate me. Why should we take the fifth when we're not even communists anymore? Because we have no choice, my friend. This country is not a good place for us to be right now. We have a choice. No, no choice. What you will do is not choice. It is mistake. I'm sacrificing for what I believe. You think what you do is great sacrifice? Yes. Tell me something. How much is that stinking bastard Louis Mayer paying you for a week's worth of writing those dreadful that put on a show movies? 750. 750? Let me tell you something, my friend. If you want people to think you are a great liberal making the ultimate sacrifice for the communist way of life, you had better be sacrificing more than 750 lousy stinking American dollars a week. 
I have lived many years in Hollywood as a film director. I earn many thousands of dollars each week. I have a big house with a swimming pool. I've been shining the statue of little bald man. My sacrifice is great. Your sacrifice don't mean crap. Come with me, Billy. We will educate the next generation with big important dramas and clever little satires. No more of this American bang bang crap. I've already begun to secure financing and friends. I can't just ask my family to pull up root and move to a strange place. This is my home. You will find a new home. The friends will take you in. Say what, Americans. Ever since you liberated that country with your tanks and saved their bakeries. It's not that easy. You're a director. You deal in pictures. I deal in words. The only words I know are English. We got a good team. We made many good pictures together, and soon we will make many more. Trust me. Only now they will have some Aren't you forgetting most of our audiences can't read? You have secured my baby in the side base parking place? Uh-huh. Good. We may be here for a while. It seems we find ourselves in the middle of a bad mystery. What do you mean? Billy has also received a subpoena. Oh, shit, Billy. Why are they here? Is this irony or a shitty sense of humor? No one knows why we are here. But I got a message that It wasn't I... from me. Then who? We were thinking maybe the FBI to set us up. The FBI? Can you believe it? Yeah, sure. They could be showing us that cheery nurturing side of the federal government. Maybe they brought us all together to apologize beforehand for obliterating our careers. We're overlooking something here. What? <laughs> Not a what, a who. James. James. You're the only one of us not here. What are you looking at me for? When was the last time you saw him? I don't know. Four or five days a week. Why? And what was the topic of discussion? The usual. Yeah. His wife. And when the time maybe she's no longer his wife. What did he say? Not much. Starting to get the feeling I'm beating a dead writer. He hasn't been here in weeks, maybe months. I do not trust him. I have never trusted him. Don't be ridiculous. He's one of us. All right. Granted, he may be a libidinous, amoral sociopath with no artistic integrity, but he's still one of us. Is he? This would make a great script. There's political intrigue, suspense, a possible love of quarrel, maybe even a little danger. And there's nothing to do but wait. While under the table, the bomb ticks away. Like a scene from that son of a bitch Hitchcock. No, it's not a thriller. It's too absurd. Need to put it in the garbage dispenser. The Marx Brothers. Exactly, the Marx Brothers. A night on the blacklist. <laughs> the blacklist. Chico, the double talking studio executive. And which is the one who can't speak? Carpo. He, of course, will be the witness who refuses to answer. Of course, Carpo takes the fifth. What about Zeppo? Zeppo, who needs him? He's not mine. Perfect. He can be that bastard McCarthy. And Groucho does the opening number. <laughs> right! As committee chairman Rufus C. Gavin. Well, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Huh? <clears throat> sure use the drink. There's beer in the next box. Still using this thing? They've invented electricity, you know. Yeah. Remember when we found it in the band lot driving up here? Start sliding back looks like steps and almost crushed you. They get that feeling again. Do you get a subpoena? Mm-hmm. Us too. We're working ourselves up a mom mentality. Yeah, then we're going to find this son of a bitch informer who did this to us and hang him up right here. really mad about how they got our names. Yes, the bastards must pay. Is attaching a blame going to change this? This can be dealt with. So we're going to have to wise up and rethink our lives a little. Hey, what's an inconvenient injustice against a handful of people when you look at the big picture, huh? Inconvenient injustice? We're talking widescreen here, Ernest. You have got to start thinking in cinemascope. Crime against only one man is still a crime against humanity. Yeah? How do you classify crimes against an entire idea? What's he talking about? Oh, oh, how'd you get yourself dragged into this mess? The party? The Communist Party? Not what it was. Never was what it was or what we thought it was. No system of government is perfect. And this one isn't even close. It's not in here. You've all heard the rumors about Stalin and the purges. The political executions, the mass starvations, the labor camps. I mean, believe me, it's one thing to be a well-meaning, let's save the world liberal, but another thing altogether to be a Soviet communist. Thanks for trying to set us straight, but we prefer to continue to lean to the left. Go on and let your life be ruined by misguided loyalty if you want. Not me. The Communist Party's not going to control me. I didn't sign on to have my personal life compromised and my artistry questioned. <laughs> Trust me, dear. You need to help compromise. Last time I checked, I was one with one of those. Uh, 
is the Oscar, the supreme symbol of artistic integrity. Oh, sorry, go ahead. How dare you insult my paper like that? I'll get off. We've both been approached by party officials trying to influence the content of our work. And now we've been subpoenaed by the committee to get us to inform on our friends. I'm not sure I see the difference or your point. Oh, I see. You're up here to save us. Yes, you <laughs> need saving. You've been blind about my stupidity, but by your own intentions, your own good intentions, wake up all of you. Paul, what are you going to do? Um, about the subpoena? Yes, Paul, about the subpoena. Communist infiltration of the motion picture industry? The blacklist that does seem to be the topic of discussion at the moment. I'm going to tell the committee to go to hell. To go to jail for contempt. Yeah, I guess. You guess? Why? Explain it to you. And don't look at them. I'm fighting for the cause. What cause? Communism. It's a lousy cause, Paula. I believe. You don't believe anything. You just want to make the front page of variety. And you know you never make it on time. Jesus, what a bastard you can be. Hey, let her deny it. Let her deny that that isn't what's in the back of our head. Don't be so naive, Paula. Things aren't just good or bad, you know. The world is made up of shades. Yeah, the movies are in black and white, but we live life in the gray. Believe me, Paula, if there's someone who can tell you about sliding around in the gray, it's him. You've always got to put a personal twist on everything, huh? It is personal. No, it's beyond personal. Beyond politics, it's a question of survival. Evolution! The world is changing, people. There's an ice age coming. It's time to grow far or freeze. Nothing. So your involvement here isn't emotional. That's right. This has nothing to do with us. Think again, pal. This has everything to do with that. All right, we don't have to talk about this here. Here is the perfect place. We've come full circle. I believe this is where the whole scenario started. Starring my colleague, the story editor, attends a political meeting and meets and falls in love with either the six screenwriter. Hey, stop. I already know who you think I am. Maybe you're wrong. I don't want to be wrong. Not about this. <sighs> we have. We have. That's a lot of time. I'm talking in the past tense now. I'll sell this switch. I'm a writer. I think these things I can know. What do you expect? How can we possibly have anything together if you insist on being this irrational person? All you gotta do Names. All of them. Just a couple of lousy names, and everything can stay the way it is. It's time to cut our losses and move on to consider the consequences, the alternatives, the. the contradictions? What contradictions? How are we supposed to write characters who soar beyond our question if we roll around in the mud? You do what you have to do to survive. I'm sorry. You may be able to draw a line from Warsaw, but not me. <laughs> are you calling me him? No. V, I'm calling you a stinking hypocrite. Take a look at the mirror, buddy. There, Miss Neckenstein. The great communist. <laughs> I had to laugh when I saw that car parked outside. Some communist you are. What the rolls cost you, huh? 50, 60,000? Yeah, you talk a great revolution, but you don't really live, do you? I think the print is still better than maybe being a rat thing. And what difficult decision did you make, Ernest? I am returning to Europe. Picking up right where you left off, I'm sure. And I shall you. The great American expatriate film director. Both French will enjoy free lunch for Marseille and Paris. Yes, you're you're quite the risk taker. At least I am not becoming a rat thing to help the fascist committee protect the fortunes of all of the capitalist bastards. All right, so they're bastards. But they care about this country. They're trying to protect it. It's called patriotism. Patriotism? Ha! I'm sorry, Paul, but if you can't offer anything more intelligent than ha, I'm going to have to ask you to withdraw from the conversation. Seize. Patriots, you are so impressed with, used to cozy up with the Nazis before the war. Did you know that? Always oh, with the Nazis. The war is over. Let it go. No, we will never let it go. The world should know that before the war, the Hollywood bastards were in bed with the Nazi bastards, allowing that son of a bitch Hitler to remove those things he did not care to see from our American film, all while he wanted the murder of an entire race of people. Will the committee with their investigation set? Protecting their overseas profits, of course. Wait. The Hollywood Jews are responsible for the genocide of the European Jews? Perhaps me. You're insane. Well, maybe that's what happens to people when they hear a cousin being made into lampshades. Give me the script, Billy. We will get together soon to discuss the move. You're taking Billy with you? Yes. Billy is going with me. We will continue to work despite humans those like you. 
And you're going with him, Billy? Of course he is. Billy is grateful because of the career I have given him writing my movies. Well, that's not a grateful bastard in this room. You're incredible. Have you ever heard the word egocentric? No. Have you ever heard the word strangled? He's bleeding your talent, Billy. It never occurred to you that it might be your good comrade, Ernest, who named you to the committee, so you'd have no choice but to go to York with him? You lying bastard! No, James, it had not occurred to me. I made those spills great. I want this thing despite your lousy words. You are a hat. No, you are worse than a hat. You are a hat who double crosses on his friends. Soon I will be rid of you and this country and its committee. So I say to you, go to hell, you no talent hat bastard. I am returning to Europe to practice work and stick for you. Not as they revoked the task force. What do you know? You've testified, haven't you? You bastard! Look, it's not like I, I raised my hand and volunteered, you know. Right, you probably subpoenaed them. When I looked up to you, I wanted to be like you. I can understand that, considering who you are. Hey, I don't have to take hey, that! Wait a second. We are proceeding on the assumption that James has done us harm. But we don't know that to be certain. That's right. We don't want to be accused of accusing someone on hearsay and innuendo. All he's confessed to is naming names, not to the names he's named. I believe the record shows that no one yet has had the guts to look us in the eye in solemn, penitent tones and confess that they fed us to the lions. Well, James, we should make it official for the record. James Austin, are you now or have you ever been guilty of informing on your fellow travelers? Don't play that game with me. A willfully breaking the sacred trust of your friends. Not to answer is to be held in contempt. This is absurd. You're selfishly selling that trust to maintain your personal industry. How do you get what any sane person would do? Just answer the question! I'm not going to answer the question! Answer the question! Yeah, you do! Oh, it's an answer, James! All right, I'm naming you! Yeah. I willingly held my hand on the Bible and told the sons of bitches everything. I told them that we were a cell, car carrying commons. That we met in this very room Tuesday nights at 9, in secret, while the rest of the country was numbing their brains on a milky. I knew it. I knew you did do this for the first minute I saw your face, you son of a big stinking traitor! Relax. Everyone take a deep breath, and let's try to act civilized. Civilized? That pig of a bastard does not belong in civilization! I must leave now, before I decide to become an even bigger bastard and maybe commit murder! Give me the script, Billy. I can't. What do you mean you can't? I was pleasant. Seth. Seth, is my movie out there. Blowing down the street. Oh, the murder mystery. No, this is something else. Now, what is she talking about? There's no murder mystery. You know, down in the icebox with cold bloody murder? Paul! Don't worry, it's not a loaded scene. Paul! Jesus. What's going on? Jesus, Billy, where did you get a loaded gun? It was loaded? Take me, Paul. Why the hell did you stop me? I tried. As you can see, Paul, this isn't quite the harmless game you thought it was. Get away from me, all of you. Just get away from me! No! Now look what you've almost done. You and your rat faint friends. Hey, don't pin this on me, okay? I didn't put a gun in anyone. Why not? You gonna be okay? I don't know. I must leave now. I will be down to the street trying to pick back up the pieces of my career. If you are playing games with me about the passport, <coughs> I will repay you unpleasantly. Give up. My wife? My family? 
And in exchange, I give up everything I am to be everything you are. Sorry. Can't do that. <coughs> I wish I had something else to say. Cutting remark. Clever exit line that would tie up all the loose ends. But I don't. You people are insane. You're missing the point, Jane. No, you're missing the point. Let me explain it for you. The Communist Party is bad, Billy. It's not a good thing, Billy. I agree with you. It is misguided loyalty to a misguided idea. Yes. But that's just a red herring. Uh, what drives the story, the engine of this whole tragic situation, is friendship, loyalty. It's about playing God with other people's lives. The lives of friends. Well, you don't have to worry about me, Billy. I've never set myself so high. I know how these things happen. <laughs> you know nothing. I understand that orcs continue working at feed your family. Yet a toss can make a couple names. But that's not where it ends, because those names in turn have a toss that can make a couple more names. And it goes on, multiplying geometrically, passing the gut-wrenching, life-shattering decision onto another innocent family. So now instead of your family facing oblivion, it's me and my family. It's my wife. My kids. You remember my wife and kids, don't you? I can show you a picture if you like. You were trying to make me feel guilty. You didn't even bother. I ain't mean, just trying to find an acceptable solution to this mess you put me into. Now that I'm on the hot seat, who should I pass the buck to? Who should I make pay for a naive, nearsighted decision that I made ten years ago? Who deserves that? How could I possibly make a judgment on someone else's life? Find it gets easier the more you do. I'd tell you what I'd like to do. I'd like to send it back around like a game of tag in the playground. Like the yell out reverse. So that's insanity would travel back around the way it came until it eventually tracked down the person who started it all. How do you sound like Paul? Treating it all like a game. I know it's not a game. When the man from the Justice Department this morning, when he handed me the subpoena, when he actually placed it in my hand, it felt like the weight of the world. I literally could not hold it. <laughs> it's just a sheet of ink paper, Billy. Not a poignant metaphor. It may feel like paper to you, but to me this morning, all I could feel was all the terrible implications that it represented. And with the weight of the world in my hand, I made a decision. A drastic, gut-wrenching decision. To kill yourself? Rather than to betray your principles? Our principles are all we have. They're all you have. Your career is gone. You've seen to that with your stubbornness. That seems to bother you. Sure it bothers me. It would bother any sane man. I'm sorry, I just don't see it the same way you do. I know you don't. You know, you're the one person I know who actually joined the Communist Party because he wanted to help the common man. The rest of us, he just joined so we have something to talk about in parties. Don't say that. Well, we were a cell the unit. The Communist Party may have put us together, but it wasn't what held us together. We were held together by the collective belief that this world could be a better place. You did good things. You spread socialism. I just socialized. You'll never convince me of that. Can't you understand? I, I, have, ne I have never written one solitary work that I believe in. <laughs> Can you even comprehend what that is like? Huh? And so we went the big statue, and suddenly life is great! I have mine in a display case in my living room overlooking the swimming pool and the tennis court. You use yours as a paper. The perfect little irony, huh? Don't you see what I'm talking about? I can't keep falling short like this, Billy. It's destroying me. One of us has got to go. Hey, so take it. Take the gun and, and put it to your head and squeeze the trigger. Because without you trying to compare myself to it, it'd be a lot easier to live with myself. James! <sighs> Jesus. Can you smell the irony here? Huh? So think you can choke on it. I'm trying to destroy a life worth saving so I can save a life which, which probably should be destroyed. You don't want me to die. You're already dead. I killed you at 10 a.m. yesterday morning in a smoke-filled office about three blocks from here. So fall down already. But you resurrected me when you arranged this meeting. Resurrected you? Who do you think you are? Jesus Christ? Is that how you see me? Well, we're sure acting the part, ready to carry our sins to the cross with you. And so you take the role of Judas. <laughs> You left me no choice. I had to take action. These are dramatic times, Billy. And there's nothing more undramatic than a stagnant character. 
copy that. I had no idea it was such a strong influence. Yeah, no idea. What was like to have to sit across this table and look you in the eye while I live up your work? For Christ's sake, I, I practically stole my share of that Oscar from you. We both know it. And those were your ideals and principles those characters were spouting in the dark. Your passions that drew people into the theaters and, and coaxed them to the edge of their seats. My only contribution was the blank page. You let me share the credit, and I did it. Glad we could help each other through this. If you want to help me, give in. Take the rational solution. Just give the community a couple of laughs. That's your solution. And that's yours. It was. But not anymore. That's it, really. Self-preservation, adapt. Give the committee what they want. It's the only way that we can both survive. I'm sorry, James. You can survive that way if you'd like. But I've got to keep on fighting. Because if I give in and take a piece of decency with me, that's just another victory for ignorance and fear. Great speech, Billy. Great speech. Very Mr. Smith goes to Washington. This is not your reversal. This could be dealt with. I know you, James. I know you don't. You don't know me. OK? You're just self-righteous enough to think that you do. I know that when the gun was bought and loaded, and sitting in front of me, and I was all set to take the easy way out, I made one last call. But what's going to talk me out of it? Someone to tell me it's going to be all right. You know who I call? Not my wife, my family, or my parents. Stop it! I called you! How about backfiring? You see, James, there must be some good in you, some good in us, together. Something to hold on to. Don't you understand that? I know what I am. This is my reality. This is what I am. I can't change it. I don't want to change. But I'm sorry. Here, you can have the office. I don't think I'll be needing it. Don't you feel sorry for me? You hear? I'm living my life. I'm making the unpopular decisions. I'm making the tough choices. I'm adapting. I'm surviving. I'm not ashamed of what I am. Hey, I'm not ashamed of what I am. What are you going to do, Billy? You're going to be fighting the committee in front of the whole country? Go to jail for your principles? Go to jail for contempt? Be a big hero? There are no heroes in this insanity, James. Only victims. And don't you turn your back on me, Billy. And I told you, Billy, this thing has to be settled one way or another. Well, well if you think I'm going to sit around the rest of my life, huh, replaying my testimony over and over, wishing I could change my answers, well, you've got that me! Don't you? 